You're the name. Come on, help me. You're the name. All names. God, you're worthy. You're worthy of all praise. And our hearts will sing. And my heart will sing. How great is our God. How great is our God. Sing with me. How great is our God. All will sing. like Jehovah. The song said, there's no God like Jehovah. Hallelujah. We're getting ready to go before the throne of grace. But if you know that there is no God like Jehovah, if you know that there is no God like our God, hallelujah, I believe we can take 10 seconds, hallelujah, and just give our God some praise. We can take 10 seconds and just give our God some glory. We can take 10 seconds and worship his name. We can take 10 seconds and lift him up. We can take 10 seconds and bow down because there's no God like Jehovah. There's no God like our God. There's no God like our King. Hallelujah, he's great and he's mighty. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. 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 How great is our God. How great is our God. Father God, we thank you for your greatness. God, we thank you for your mercy. God, we thank you for your love. God, we thank you for your kindness. God, we thank you for your provision. God, we thank you for making a way. God, we thank you for your peace. God, we thank you because you've been so good. Hallelujah. We thank you for one more opportunity to gather together, oh God. Hallelujah. Be we outside or inside. Hallelujah. Be we at our homes or at our jobs. Hallelujah. Gather together one more time to let you know that we're thankful for your greatness. Hallelujah. 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 God, be in this service today, oh God. Move by your power. Move by your strength. Hallelujah. Let your glory fall on us. Let your glory be revealed in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. We come against fear. We come against depression. We come against everything that's not like you, oh God. Send healing, oh God. 
Send healing, oh God, in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Heal our lands. Heal our homes. Heal our families. God, send healing, Lord, in the name of Jesus. And we glorify you for it now. And we thank you for it now. Be in the word, oh God. Be in every song, oh God. Hallelujah. And we bless your name. Hallelujah. We give these next 90 minutes, oh God, to you. Hallelujah, just like we gave the last 90 minutes, just like we gave the last 10 years, oh God. Move by your power right now, oh God, and we thank you. In the name of Jesus, continue to look down on our pastor. Hallelujah, anoint him for this moment. Anoint him for this time. Let the word go across with power, and we bless your name. In Jesus' name, thank God. Yeah, yeah, thank God. Amen. Amen. If you have your Bibles, amen. Uh, Deacon Stokes is coming, amen. We want you to read along with us. Amen. Even though you're at home, if you have your Bible, go ahead and break it out. Amen. And thank God. This morning we'll be reading from Psalms 103, verse 1 through verse 4. Bless the Lord, O my soul, in all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits. Who forgiveth all thine iniquities, who healeth all thy diseases, who redeemeth thy life from destruction, who crowneth thee with loving kindness and tender mercies. The word of the Lord for the Lord's people. God bless you.
Searched all over, couldn't find nobody. Searched all over, couldn't find nobody like you. Hey, yes, girl, I searched all over. Searched all over, couldn't find nobody. Searched all over, couldn't find nobody like you. Hey, yes, I searched all over. Searched all over, couldn't find nobody. Searched all over. missionary crystal stokes to come with an exhortation amen and we do welcome you amen to the historic boone tabernacle church of god in christ where our pastor amen is the bishop hallelujah none other lf thuston thank you for joining us amen lord we thank you for your presence that's already in the room thank you oh god that there is nobody greater nobody greater than you and we can have joy in the morning and joy in the noonday and joy all day long. Let your glory be revealed. It's not unto us, O oh Lord, not unto us, but unto thy name give glory for thy mercy and thy true sake. I certainly thank God for being in the house of the Lord. I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. I certainly want to give honor to our pastor, Bishop Thuston, for this opportunity and to our first lady, first lady Thuston, all the elders and ministers and to all the saints of God. I'm going to Matthew chapter five and I'm going to be beginning at verse one. And seeing the multitudes, he went up into a mountain and when he was set, his disciples came unto him, and he opened his mouth and taught them, saying, Bless are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are they that mourn, for they shall be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. Blessed are they which do hunger and thirst after righteousness, for they shall be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called the children of God. Blessed are they which are persecuted for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are ye when men shall revile you and persecute you and shall say all manner of evil against you falsely for my sake. Rejoice! 
and be exceeding glad, for great is your reward in heaven, for so persecuted they the prophets which were before you. And then very quickly to John chapter 15. I am the true vine, and my father is the husbandman. Every branch in me that beareth not fruit, he taketh away. And every branch that beareth fruit, he purgeth it, so that it may bring forth more fruit. Now ye are clean through the word which I have spoken unto you. Abide in me, and I in you, as the branch cannot bear fruit of itself, except it abide in the vine. No more can ye, except ye abide in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. He that abideth in me, and I in him, the same bringeth forth much fruit. For without me ye can do nothing. Very short, I just want to talk about the pursuit of happiness versus Jesus' joy. Our pastor gave us Jesus' joy years ago, talking about the kind of joy that Jesus comes to bring. Everybody wants to be happy. Everybody is in the pursuit of happiness, looking for a big house, looking for the fancy car, looking for the nice clothes, looking for the fine jewelry, because they believe that it's going to bring them happiness. Everybody wants some form of happiness. And so they spend their time and energy trying to make more money, trying to have better prestige or power. But Jesus tells us in this Matthew chapter 5, there's a deeper form of happiness that can only be found in a relationship with Jesus. Jesus, when he's giving them the, uh, the Sermon on the Mount, he's telling them all these things. You're going to be blessed if you're poor in spirit. You're going to be blessed when people persecute you. And sometimes you want to stop and look at those verses and say, really, Jesus? Really? Are we really supposed to be happy and full of joy when people are persecuting us, when people are reviling us? How are we supposed to have the Jesus joy when people people are persecuting us. When we're poor in spirit, how are we going to have that? So here's what you need to know is that your relationship with Christ, if you're in Christ, you can have Jesus joy. There really is no true joy, no Jesus joy without being connected to Jesus. You have to be in him. One of the things that we've been doing since we've been going through this pandemic, Pastor Thurston has had us connect in various ways. We've had the live streaming. We've been on Zoom for Sunday school. We've been on Zoom for Bible study. The missionaries got a prayer line. We got all kinds of ways of still staying connected. You know why? Because it's so important for all the members to stay within the body. The enemy will try to isolate you, to get you by yourself. Because if he can get you by yourself, he can just start to tear you down. But if you stay connected to the body, remember we're all members. We got different functions. We got different roles, but it's the same body. And so pastor has found a way for us to stay connected. I want you to stay connected. I want you to talk to one another. There's a scripture in the Bible that says, and they that feared the Lord spoke often. They spake often to one to another. So you don't want to stay out there isolated. You want to stay abiding in the body of Christ. So Jesus tells us over there in St. John 15, you really can't do nothing without me. Really, you can't. You might try to pursue happiness. You might go down your own path trying to find your own way to what you feel is success, to what you feel is happiness. But what's going to happen? I got a question for you. What happens when the happiness starts to get low? What happens when you lose the house? What happens when you lose the car? What happens if you're in this pandemic and you lost your job? What happens when those things Things that you thought would bring you happiness are no longer there. Where are you going to go then? Where are you going to find your joy? Where are you going to find your peace? You got to find your joy in Jesus. It's the only way. So the, the, the way Jesus teaches us is a little different from what the world says. It's really contradictory to what the world says. Because the world says, you give me, I'm going to get you. An eye for an eye, a tooth for a tooth. You kill my dog, look out, because you might not have your cat tomorrow. All right, you see how the enemy thinks. He wants you to go out and try to redeem yourself, try to vindicate yourself. But Jesus said, no, 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 that's not what I'm telling you. When you follow me, you're going to have to be willing to love when others hate. 
You're going to have to be willing to give when others only want to take. You're going to have to be willing to endure when others want to give up. Because following Jesus is a different way. It's a different way. It's contradictory to what we've been taught. So if you follow Jesus, if you abide in him, he's got some great things for you. He tells them in all those scriptures in Matthew 5, great is your reward in heaven. Or if you're merciful, you're going to obtain mercy. But we don't just follow Jesus, right, for just the, the loaves and the bread. We're not just following him for what he can do for us, but we are following Jesus because we love him. And when you love somebody, you'll hang on in there. You'll hang on in there. You'll say, we're going to make it. It don't look good right now but we're gonna make it you do it because you love the Lord and when you stay with Christ he will fortify you Jesus won't ever forget about you he will always reward the righteous there's always going to be something for the righteous do you think he's gonna rain on the just and the unjust or, or just rain on the ungodly and then forget about you as a saint of God no Jesus never forgets about his children if you are willing to abide in him if you stay with him, he'll give you peace. If you stay with him, he'll give you love. He'll give you joy. Jesus will give you things that are eternal. They don't have a monetary value on them. You can't pay for joy. You can't pay for peace. He wants to give you only what he can give you. So Jesus tells us, abide in me. He got to remind us, you got to abide in me. Because every now and then, we want to get off track. We want to go down our own road. We want to do our own thing. But he wants you to abide in him. In uh, Galatians 5 and 22, it talks about the fruit of the Spirit. And one of them is joy. It's the second one. And we've been talking all about joy in Philippians on our Bible study on Thursday night. And Paul has such a different perspective. Wow. I mean, when you read those scriptures, his perspective is so different on joy. He tells you, I'm writing you these scriptures. I'm giving you this word of the Lord. And I'm physically bound. I am in prison. But then you know what he says? The word of God is not bound. The word of God is not bound. It can reach here, there, and everywhere. Just because I'm physically bound, it does not mean the gospel will not go forth. It does not mean that God is not still healing that he's not still saving. Even Paul, he knew, Paul knew that some people were out there preaching. He said, some are preaching for vain reasons. Some are preaching for this, that, and the other out of jealousy. He said, but you know what? I'm not even tripping on that. I'm not even worried about that because either way, the gospel is being preached and I'm happy. That's what he says. Either way, the gospel is still going forth. Even if your motives are not right, don't mean mine not right. And either way, the name of Jesus is being uplifted. Somebody is hearing about the gospel of Jesus Christ. So you got to keep that joy. You got to stay connected. That's why we are connecting all these various kind of ways. You want to abide in the Lord. Now I want to close with this. If you get off track, and we do, we do get off track. Sometimes you're not going to feel like praying. You know what I'm going to tell you to do? Pray anyway. Sometimes you're not going to feel like reading your Bible. But you know what I'm going to tell you to do? Read it anyway. And sometimes you're not going to feel like shouting, singing, dancing, none of that. But you know what I'm going to tell you to do? Do it anyway. I will bless the Lord at all times. And his praise shall continually be in my mouth. My soul shall make her boast in the Lord. And the humble shall hear thereof and be glad. Oh, magnify the Lord with me. And let us, let us, let us magnify his name together. Do you know when you stay abiding in the word of God, when you stay connected to Jesus, did you know you're in his presence? And if you're in his presence, what is there? Fullness of joy. Hallelujah. And pleasures forevermore. God wants you to have all of those things. He doesn't want you to be left without joy. He doesn't want you to be left without peace and all the things that he comes to give. And remember your joy is not dependent on your circumstance. That's what I love about Paul. Paul's circumstances were crazy. They were kind of crazy. He's in prison. I mean, you think to yourself, how can he be full of joy and he's in prison? It's the way the God, the God works within the saints of the Lord. It's the way the Holy Ghost is. It allows you to come in here and your back might be up against your wall. You might be a little bit like me, surrounded, mama-in-law, 
uh, was sick, daddy's sick, lost my stepmother, all at the same, literally within weeks of one another. But you know what the joy of the Lord will help you to do? It's not dependent on my circumstance. If I don't look at my circumstance, the, oh yeah, the enemy tried to draw me in with depression. I can feel the depression coming on. But I said, God, please help me. Help me out of this depression. Help me out of all this sorrow that I feel in my heart. All this heaviness and all this pain. How can I get through this? He said, if you stay in me, if you abide in me, if you abide in my word, you can ask what you will and I'll do it for you. And he said, I'll give you peace. I'll help you out in the midst of this pandemic. So much death all around us. So much sorrow all around. But guess what? Jesus is in us. His spirit is abiding in us. And we are abiding with him. And as long as we stay with him, we're going to bear some fruit. And when we bear that fruit, it's going to remain. It will not go away. So stay connected. Stay in the vine. Stay abiding with Jesus. Because in his presence, there is fullness of joy. Hallelujah. Oh my God, oh my God, oh my God, oh my God. I don't, I don't know if you're able to stand up. Um, we could only have so many people in church today. This is our phase three. We could only have so many. So most of you are not in this building. Most of you all are in your house. <laughs> most of you all are in your garage. Uh, most of you all are on your driveway. But if you can, just stand up. If you're able to stand, stand up. And I mean stand up on the inside, stand up on the outside. Let the person of Christ stand up inside of you. And then if you can physically stand up, just shout, I got joy. No, you got to claim it. You got to claim it. You got to open your mouth. You've got to believe it in your heart. You have to confess it with your lips if you have it on the outside then you gotta have it on the inside I have, we don't want to come through this way stop this traffic there you go good turn everybody shout I have joy clap your hands for just one minute and give God the praise I got it, 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 I got it. Hey, missionary, can you just finish your message? Come on back and finish it, come back and finish it. You never get finished, you can never get finished. You just come to a stopping point. Can you just lead us in that praise, joy bells keep ringing in my heart? Yeah. Is that in your message? Yeah, that's fine. It's in there now. Go on and sing that. Let's join it. Joy up. bells keep ringing in my soul. Joy bells keep ringing in my soul. Joy bells, joy bells. Joy bells keep ringing in my soul. Oh, joy bells keep ringing in my soul. Joy bells keep ringing in my soul. Clap your hand, clap your hand. Go on and clap your hand. Clap your hand, clap your hand. Just a band, just a band, just a band, just a band. Brother Stokes, help him out. Just a band, just a band. 
Yeah, just like that. Uh huh. That's right. Last time, everybody. Oh, joy bell. Uh-oh, uh-oh. Sit down if you want to. Sit down if you want to. It's just good to be in the house of the Lord. It's just good to be on the Lord's side. It's just good to have joy. It's just, aren't you glad you have joy? Joy like a river. It's just good to know that you got victory on the inside. And everybody said amen. God bless you. God bless you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. God bless you. Will you come and read that passage, Minister Johnson? And um, wow, I'm just glad to be in our first Sunday back inside and this is our phasing in we started out with just operating from a single person and then we brought in the team for facebook live and then we were able to no more than 10 people no more than 10 and for the last three weeks we've been on the parking lot for a drive-in service Three Sundays, drive in. Wow, I like having church outside. And um, in fact, the parking lot was turned into a ministry, a ministry station. Once again, this past week where hundreds of people were fed for the first time in our community, our church was the site to feed hundreds of people who needed natural food. And now we're back in our physical congregation with limited seating. Uh, this is a bittersweet episode uh, to have to limit how many people can come to church. We've been begging people to come to church for hundreds of years. And now we have to have a cutoff. Only a limited group, less than 10% of our capacity. And uh, from that standpoint, I would have to announce we pretty near have a full house today. At our cutoff point, pretty near, pert near, we have only those seats that have been reserved. But aren't you glad that the church is wherever we are with one accord? And if you couldn't get your reservation in, you're not able to come. Your physical conditions won't allow you to. Um, certainly, thank God we can connect through the web and through the internet, through Facebook, through, uh, I almost said inner tube, it's the, um, through the Jew tube. We're able to go through all the nets. And guess what? Evidently, you made it. Everybody just say, seems like I made it. And uh, what a glorious time to honor the Lord today. Now there's certain rules that we have to comply with and we're going to do it. I do not like wearing this mask. I don't like it. But hey, if you want to live in victory, you learn to do a lot of things you don't like. I don't like paying taxes, but I pay them. I don't like stopping at the red light where there's no cars coming. But I stop at the red light when no cars are coming most of the time. Most of the time. Amen. And so we're wearing our mask. And thank you all for wearing them today. We're observing the distancing, the special distancing, except for families. And uh, God is working a wonder even in these trying times. I feel the presence of the Lord in here right now. I say God is working a wonder. 
even in these trying times. Hallelujah. He will give you feast in the time of famine. He'll give you comfort in the time of chaos. Yes, he will. He'll bring you closer when everything is pulling you apart. I mean, God will give you wealth when all you see is poverty. That's because he not only will carry you through, but he will carry you through triumphantly everybody say triumphantly open your voice real loud and just say triumphantly he not only comes to give you survival but he causes us to triumph in him always thank you lord read the word of the god where the lord minister johnson read the word of the lord we're coming into the fourth quarter read the word of the lord This is coming out of John 8, chapter, verses 31 and 32. Then Jesus said to the Jews, which believed on him, If you continue in my word, then ye are my disciples indeed. And ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. Amen to the reading of the word, in the doing. Uh, the message today has already been presented and what a juicy and solid exhortation everybody doesn't have the same collection of blessings uh, you go to some houses they have the finest of China but they don't have that much to brag about in silverware you go to some homes they have fine silverware but their furniture leaves much to be desired. Uh, I've been to many homes where the home was palatial and uh, the food was best served to the pet puppy. And I've been to some homes where the food was so choice, um, but the air conditioning never worked. Never do you, not often do you get to the home where everything is just perfect. And that's because God has a way of giving everybody something. But he never gave anybody everything. Why don't you just say, I'm glad for what God gave me. Church like this, if we didn't know better, we would never need to invite a guest speaker. If we didn't know better, we would never need a specialist to come through. If we didn't know better, we could handle all of the ministry gifts from within this ministry rich and gifted congregation. But the scripture did say, do the work of an evangelist. It did put in ministries and we do need to have others to come and share from time to time because the work of the kingdom is greater than any one congregation. And no one church has everything. But God provides all of our needs. And out of all of these missionaries, Missionary Crystal Stokes has brought us a timely word. So many singers appreciate the praises that have gone forth today. Uh, Missionary Johnson. Minister Barnes and Missionary Congo Julia and uh, Missionary, is that baby Kristen? Kristen and these musicians and these ministers. Glad to see you, Elder Pinkard and Elder Rucker. Thank God for you. Um, carrying on today, Minister Johnson, Minister Sanders, our precious first lady. Only one of those, only one, only one. <laughs> Only one of those. Um, but consider just this in conclusions. I only give a conclusion. Listen to what Jesus said in John 8. And Minister Johnson just read verse 32. If you drop down to verse 30, 
um, six. My God. Mm, mm, mm. And I wish everybody would just give the Lord a wave offering while you hold your Bible. Don't drop your Bible. Don't drop your baby, but just give the Lord a wave offering. And while you're waving your hand, I'm talking about right where you are, right where you are. You wave your hand in the presence of God. You honor him for being in the atmosphere, for being all around you, for surrounding you. And while you're waving your hand, just say, you've been so good. You've been so good. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Just open your mouth and just give the Lord a praise. Everybody, open your mouth, wherever you are. That's right. Right where you are. That's right, brother. Right, right in your house, right in this church, right in your moment. Wonderful Savior. Wonderful Jesus. Bless his name. Mm. Bless his name. Let me just say this. Blessed be the name of the Lord. He's worthy to be praised and adored. You ready? Lift your hand. Lift up holy hands. One accord. Blessed be the name. Blessed be the name. Blessed be the name. Of the Lord. Let's go up one tone. Come up one tone. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Say, He's worthy. He is worthy to be praised and adored. Use your hand. Use your hand. Lift up holy hand. Singing, blessed be the name. You got it. Blessed be the name. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Go up one more tone. Last time. Blessed be the name. Oh, that's better. You got it. He's worthy. He's worthy. To be praised and adored. Your time. I'm going to lift up holy hands with one accord. Blessed be the name. Say it two more times. Blessed be the name. Blessed be the name. Blessed be the name of the Lord. One time, everybody, tell the Lord yes. Everywhere, everywhere, from your heart. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, yeah. Tell him, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. Concluding John 8. Concluding John 8. And verse... 36 if the son therefore shall make you free you shall be free 
indeed. This is the free part of the word. Verse 32, Brother Johnson already read it. And ye shall know the truth. And the truth shall make you free. And then verse 36. If the Son, therefore, shall make you free, you shall be free indeed. You don't have to try hard to see a connection here, but there is a connection between his joy and your freedom. In fact, probably if you had given this missionary just a little more time, she would have ended up showing you the way to a life of joy is an experience of freedom. And if I had just a little more time, oh my God, I would take your freedom and introduce you to the formula of joy. In fact, let me tell you, I feel, do you know, do you know I feel the spirit of freedom in my spirit right now? No, no, I, I, I am sensing it. I'm having a spiritual moment that I have quite often of experiencing the true freedom and liberation that goes along with the joy of the Lord. Um, okay, do you have one? Do you have one? I think I do. I think I do. I do. I do. I do. I do. I have a coin, and it has a George Washington on the front. They have so many new coins. And what is this? All right. I believe this is the bald eagle on the back. This is one, Bishop Pledge used to say two bits. This is one 25-cent piece. And it has two sides. And one of them has the picture, the image of the president that was first among 45. And on the back it has the um, king of the air, the eagle. It's just one coin. But you don't have one without the other. I didn't know how the Holy Ghost was going to do what he has done. And I never know how he's going to do what he's going to do. But if you are going to continue in the joy of the Lord. You've got joy on one side. And you've got freedom on the other side. Hey, hey, I'm, I'm, I'm almost finished now. I'm almost finished. If this if they used to have, they used to say you should never lie on Sunday. You should never cuss on Sunday. Wait a minute, what else did they have? You should never sing the blues on Sunday. Go to the honky tonk on Sunday. Never get drunk on Sunday. And somebody said you could never, you should never get high on Sunday. Just in case somebody has the vestiges of a doctrine that was always wrong you should not get drunk any day shouldn't lie any day should cuss any day shouldn't hold monkey any day i mean you shouldn't backslide any day every day you should say this is the day that the lord has made and what we're going to do is rejoice and be glad on it. But if maybe if it wasn't Sunday. And I wasn't in the pulpit. And I might not uh, have to worry about somebody getting the wrong impression. I would flip this coin. But I'm not going to flip it up here. But if I did flip it. It would either land on heads. Or tails. Because whether you flip it or not. There's two sides. To every coin. 
And do you not know that our world is in a quandary for freedom? That's why they are pulling down statues of men that they never met. That's why streets are being discussed as overdue to be renamed. That's why they're protesting in so many cities and rioting in many others. That's why the rules of engagement for police departments are being reviewed all across the nation, including Kansas City. And that's also why the bars are full. And the taverns are overflowing. That's why the dope dealers are working overtime. And the bootleggers are still in business. That's why the gambling halls are being revisited. Because there is an insatiable urge to find joy and to find freedom. Thank you, Jesus. But may I just remind you of what you probably already know. There are not many roads to freedom. Not many. No, no, they're not many. I know you've been told that. Get a friend. Everybody needs a buddy. And then you'll feel some freedom. Get some education. And if you get your degree or your diploma, then your mind will open. Okay, how about work out uh take some yoga learn i got to go there brother sanders Cha! take up the martial arts matter of fact fall in love with your puppy or your cat or your fish or your bird now, how about go to a concert go to a game listen to the music Enjoy the steel drums from the Caribbean land. No, no, how about this? Just work when you don't know what else to do. And get yourself another job. Find another wad of money. The list goes on and on, but those are only fictitious facts about happiness. Because what you really need is more than the placebo of happiness. What your soul is yearning for is freedom. To be free indeed. And to have joy, joy, joy that does not come from an external source. But it's an internal well that gushes up in the living water. And I close with my quiz for the day. Everybody say gospel quiz. I close with the gospel quiz. Question number one. Write it down if you need to. The names of three people who you believe love you. You only have five seconds. Then we go to the next question. And I know for some of y'all, it may take more than five minutes. But just see if you can name the names of three people that love you. You believe love you. One, two, three. I hope you're right. Number two. Here's your second question. Here's your second question. List at least one aspect, one area where you have been freed. Something you know you are free from. That's the bridge from the past to the present. So it would have to be where I was and where I am now. I'm about to get happy. Some, some area, you can't tell it all. Because I know it's kind of like coming to church. And I learned this a long time, Brother Jones. Never expect everybody to do what you ask them to do. 
Because usually if you ask people to write it down, that means they won't. And if you ask them not to, they will. You tell them open their Bible, they close it. You tell them to close their Bible, they open it. You tell them to wake up, they go to sleep. You tell them to go to sleep. You just have to understand, there's just a lot of people that are not free. And if they're not going to obey God, I'm talking about you in your house. I'm talking to you in your house, brother. If they're not going to obey God, they're not going to obey the boss. They're not going to obey the teacher. They're not going to obey the law. What makes you think they're going to obey God's little messenger boy? But if you're not writing it down on paper, at least write it down in your mind. There ought to be something that you can list I've been free from. For some people, it ought to be stubbornness. But that would mean you're no longer stubborn. For some people, it would have to be rebellion. But that would mean you're no longer rebellious. I mean, for somebody, for somebody it would have to be restlessness. But that would mean you now have rest. For somebody, it would have to be, it would have to, for some people, it would have to be self-hatred. Because that would mean you've learned how to love your neighbor as yourself. For some, it would have to be astrology. Because that would mean you no longer read the zodiac. You now read the promises of God. But by now, you ought to be able to list something. That you once were bound to, but now you're free. I got I got to go. I got to go, Sister Juanita. But can I tell you what I heard when I was traveling last year? This is the first year I haven't traveled in 40 years. 40 years. This is the first year of my life in 40 years. I've not been on a train or a plane or catching a bus. To some other city. Usually every week. This is different. But guess what? I like my house. I like my city. I like my, I like my county. I, I, like, I like my church. You know why? I'm free from boredom. I was traveling somewhere last year. And I heard a missionary say this. I am free from peoples. And I, if I could show you my journal entry, you would see. I put that in my journal when I got home. I heard a testimony I've never heard. I am free from peoples, plural, peoples. And I'm not totally sure what she meant. I didn't hear the whole statement. But it could be she meant the opinions of other people who don't count. It might have meant she was free from trying to satisfy those that don't deserve that much attention. It might mean she meant she was, can y'all hear me? No, no, I got to go. No, no, I got to go. It could mean, mean that she was no longer putting herself down because other people kept putting themselves up. It might mean, it might have meant I found out it really doesn't matter so much what other people think as long as you are clear on what God knows. And if God says you cool, you cool. If God says you're, if God says you're healed, you're healed. If God says you're righteous, you're righteous. If God says, wait a minute, are y'all ready? If God says you're free, he whom the Son has set free is free indeed. Time to go. You ought to be something, you know, God has set you free from. And may I go on and say this as we come into the end of this journey? You may not be sure that you are free from everything. But if you are not free from everything, begin to rejoice that you're free from something. I wish somebody would just shout back at the preacher and say, say that again. 
No, we only got three more minutes. Only have three more minutes. Only have three more minutes. You see, some people are running low on joy because of where their struggle continues. But you're going to find the joy level rising if you do not focus on the areas of your struggle, but you focus on the areas of your freedom. Say yes. We'll be up to the 4th of July, I guess, by this time next week. I'm on the right road here. Yeah, they'll be talking about freedom and independence. Uh, I, I, I'm going to confess that I'm like many millions of people. I really don't get, I'm a veteran. I love my country. Uh, I've been in two wars. So I love my, I pay my taxes. I salute the flag. Um, and God bless America. But I must admit, I don't get as excited as many do about the 4th of July. I'm going to just admit that. And some of y'all that are free from lying ought to say amen. Uh, in fact, well, it's a long story. But part of the reason is, I know that on the 4th of July, most blacks were forced to remain in bondage. And it was from 1776 until 1865. It's a long story before my people really experienced national freedom. So I'm glad for the United States and the Declaration of Independence. But what I'm really more interested in is the Underground Railroad. Because the Underground Railroad was the place of freedom inside of a freedom that was laced with bondage it was only freedom for certain kinds of people now y'all know i'm getting happy now and i got to go i got to go why don't you wave at the pastor and say i know you got to go it's hard to really appreciate a freedom that keeps other people in chains so you get a job uh, because I lose mine. It's kind of hard for me to rejoice in your promotion. Uh, you get the house and I get evicted. It's not the same thing. Can y'all hear me? Uh, you get the antidote and I die of the disease. But the freedom that I'm talking about is what took them from the land of the Confederacy. And all of them did not come through Leavenworth. There were many stop points. Some of them under cover of night and the friendship of black and white abolitionists. Uh, they ended up in Illinois. Some of them came through Buffalo, New York. Some of them came through Boston, Massachusetts. Some of them came through Columbus, Ohio. Some of them came through the peninsula of Michigan. But then some came through Riverside or Parkville, Missouri. And there's a river uh -huh, that is uh, Parkville on the east side, but Quindaro on the west side. And if they could just get across that river, they could find their way to freedom. No, no, I can't preach now. But there were those that decided that, uh-huh, I just want to get to Canada. And if I can make it to Canada, I will be free indeed. Oh, yeah. I just, I just, I think what I'm trying to say is, I stopped by to tell you that wherever, whether you are in Ohio or New York or Michigan or Illinois or Missouri or Kansas or even Canada, all you really want is to know that the Lord has made me free. Say yes. Somebody used to be a liar. Somebody used to be depressed. 
Somebody used to be restless. Somebody used to be addicted. Somebody used to be in fear. Somebody used to be in lust. Somebody used to be in witchcraft. Somebody used to be in astrology. Somebody was just in false religion. Somebody in superstition. But anybody, anybody who the Son has set free, you've got joy. I wish you would say, I got joy. 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 It's a gushing comfort on the inside. Joy. It's salvation in fluid form. Joy. It'll cause the chains to fall off. Joy. It will give you a transformed mind. Joy. I got to say it in the morning. Joy. In the noonday. Joy. When you're all by yourself. Joy. When you're in a crowd of other people. I've got joy. I've got freedom. I've got Jesus. Say it. Woo. That's, I didn't mean to say all that, Brother Rock. I didn't mean to say all that. I didn't mean to say all that, Brother Brooks. I didn't mean to say all that. But can I tell you something? When you get free, it'll change your behavior. You used to walk like this. You know why you walk like that? Because you sprain your leg. But when your leg gets well, you, oh, you can walk uprightly. Say yes. You used to use the wrong words, but now you've got a praise on your lips. I want everybody in here, everybody in here that knows the Lord has given you freedom. See if you can stand with me. Stand with me on both of your liberated legs. Thank you. I want you just to take one deep breath. Take a deep breath. Take a deep breath. Now exhale it. When you're ready to take this breath, I want you to sense there's no cuffs on your wrist. There's no shackles on your legs. There's no, there's no master you got to report to. Nobody's waiting with a nightstick to beat you upside your head. There's no pimp or no madam you got to show up for. There's no dealer you got to report to. Can y'all hear me? Yeah, you know, you know string on a yo-yo. You know puppet that's being controlled by a master. I want you just to sense beyond all of that. You have the fresh flow of liberty he has made you free and free indeed just I mean right where you are in this church or wherever you are listening to this service I want you to join in I want you to join in and just wave your hand and just shout I'm glad I'm free I'm no longer bound. No more chains are holding me. Now just clap your hands if you know the Lord paid the price. Paid the price for you to be free. I'm glad we have about 40 or so people in here today that can just join me and you'll join me where you are. Because I want to offer a word of prayer. And I want to offer a word of prayer that will include two ingredients. One, if you're not free. Okay, no, slavery is over. We know that, but racism isn't. 
Um, you know that, um, yeah, you got your rights, but they're not always applied. As a matter of fact, you can be free on the outside, but the greatest prison of all is the prison of the mind and the prison of the soul, the spirit that is in bondage. Mm. I'm going to pray. Matter of fact, I feel the Holy Ghost coming through this chapel right now into your home. Hey, good God Almighty, you don't have to continue to live the life of a beggar. You don't have to live the life of a fool. And you don't have to live the life of a slave. It is the will of God that you have spiritual freedom. I want to pray for that. Then for those of you that need to rejoice because the joy is what causes your freedom to work. What good is it to be free if you don't act like it, you don't feel like it, you don't live like it? Well, the joy of the Lord, that's your strength. I want to thank you right now. Somebody, somebody needs to be set free. Somebody needs to realize, softer, softer. Somebody needs to realize we don't free ourselves. We don't pick our own locks. But the Son of God gave his life went into death, took a trip into hell, and arose with the keys to death and hell that can set anyone free by the price that he paid for us to be redeemed. We can be free because he has paid the price, the redemption price for us to be free. And we talked about free from some things, but if Jesus can free you from anything, he can free you from everything. There's nothing that can come upon your life from your childhood, what happened in your family, what happened because of racism, what happened because of your own decisions, because of things that you thought were coincidences. It doesn't matter. Anything that keeps you in bondage, the one Savior can set you free and if you're free right now i'm going to pray that the joy bells will begin to ring that the glory of god will begin to flow and that the grace of god will be multiplied and you will rejoice in the freedom that is yours now you do that by just beginning to thank him and you agree with god you come into a bond a covenant where you do not challenge him you're not rebellious you're not indifferent, but you agree with him. And I want you to join us in this church right now as we just thank him for doing what he said, for keeping his word, for making himself real, for coming in the flesh, for going on the cross, paying the price with his own blood. Come on, let's just praise the Lord. Let's just thank him for his goodness. His mercy endureth forever. Thank you. Early this morning, I told my wife, I don't intend to be preaching today. It's going to be a condensed service. And she just made a strange smirk of, of doubt, doubt. And I asked her, what did that expression mean? She couldn't give an answer. I'm so glad I didn't come to preach today. I'm so glad I didn't come to preach today. But can I tell you what happened? I'm going to tell you what happened. While I was on my way, I sensed somebody would be in earshot of this service who needed to be reminded what Jesus can do for them. Not just what he can do for everybody else, but what he can do for them. And guess what? One of those persons might be her. One of those persons might be me. No matter how long you've been following the Lord, you need to be reminded there's somebody who loves you. I hope when you put the name of three persons, you put the name of Jesus. Hope you put him on the list because 
Whoever doesn't love you, just be glad God loves you incomparably. I hope you know that he's already freed you from something. And the last thing is, how am I going to share it? And I'm going to give you the answer to that question. You share it with your joy. Because joy is contagious. I don't want you to lay your hand on anybody right now because they told us somebody might be uh, asymptomatic. Somebody might be getting ready to get it and we don't know it. So you got your mask, you got your mask, you got your mask. Grab your mask. Everybody grab your mask. Everybody grab your mask if you don't have it on. You know what? I don't want you to, I don't want you to touch anybody physically, but I want you to point to somebody and just tell them, my joy is contagious. Guess what? It's more contagious. I know I'm going out there. I know I'm going out there. It's more contagious than uh, 19, COVID-19. Now, you know that's contagious. I don't think you ought to get too relaxed. I don't think you ought to play this thing off. I don't think you ought to get in great big crowds. I don't think you ought to have everybody in your family over at your house eating chillies and hog mall. Because this is still contagious. It's still contagious. Of course, it's a whole long list of other things that are contagious. But can I tell you what is more contagious? The joy of the Lord. You can't be around another person who is joyless and they not recognize you got it. Just wave at somebody and just tell them, you're going to catch it. You're going to catch it. You're going to catch it. You only one way you're not going to catch it. And that is you already caught it. Get your offering in your hand.